All right. So let's move back to the uh, journal. So when we talk about optimization, right? So if I try to write the gradient descent algorithm, the standard gradient descent, which is xk plus one is xk. This is when we want to minimize f of x, right? And this is the simple gradient descent algorithm. Okay. So one way is to directly analyze these algorithms in discrete setting or in discretized setting. But what I can do is I can really view this view this algorithm. So I can pretty much rewrite it like this. And I can consider the limiting case when the step size is really small, right? So in the limiting case when eta goes to zero, what does this uh, left hand side converge to? So So this left hand side in the limiting case eta goes to 0, this is nothing but your x dot, okay. And the right hand side is gradient of f of x. So this basically becomes a continuous, continuous time variant of your gradient descent, it is also called gradient flow. Okay. So this is just basically studying the continuous time limit of your discretized algorithm, right? I mean in practice we are always going to implement algorithm like the, the way we have seen over here, right? I mean you are going to be implementing everything in computers, so it has to be discretized. But from the point of view of analysis, uh, so it is much easier to analyze continuous time variants of algorithms, right? Uh, and the reason being, let us say I want to uh, optimize, so if let us say f of x happens to be half x square, okay. What is gradient of f of x? x. So what is the continuous time variant of it? x what is negative x. What is the equilibrium of this particular, uh, so this is called, this is a dynamical system now, right. So what is the equilibrium of this dynamical system? 0, right, which is the optimal solution, right. So x star is equal to 0, this is the equilibrium point. Also the optimal solution. Right? So can we say anything about the stability of this particular equilibrium point? It is exponentially stable, right? So x of t is like e to the negative t. Right? So it becomes much easier to analyze these algorithms. So we know that this algorithm is now exponentially fast. At least in continuous time, it is exponentially fast convergent to the optimal solution. Okay? So this is equilibrium is exponentially stable. So it tells you how quickly this particular algorithm converges to the optimal uh, or this, this particular dynamical system or trajectories of this dynamical system converge to the equilibrium point. So it becomes much easier to analyze than, than uh, maybe looking at the discretized version of an algorithm. Just from the analysis point of view, it makes things much easier. So for folks who have had courses uh, in control theory or in stability theory, you would have heard of something called Lyapunov stability, right? So there are a lot of results in Lyapunov stability which are related to continuous time dynamical systems. And we are going to make use, so in, since I mean it is a SISCON course, uh, so we are definitely going to make use of all the related concepts in stability theory. And we will try and analyze these algorithms as well as we will try and develop new algorithms which are uh, at least in continuous time probably faster than simple gradient descent or gradient flow. So one, one example could be. So let us say I choose, I define my dynamical system which looks something like this, divided by the norm of this gradient. So for f of x which is uh, half x square, 
what does this right hand side uh, look like for this particular dynamical system x dot is minus sine of x right it is like this particular so when x is positive sine of x is positive 1 so x dot is always negative 1 when x is positive and x dot is 1 when x is negative and it's 0 when it's 0 or maybe not well defined when it's 0 uh, when x is equal to 0 but the point is when you look at function like uh, x square or half x square if you are approaching closer to the optimal solution the gradient the value of the gradient also becomes smaller and smaller right so x dot is negative so the gradient of f of x is uh, x simply x right so the gradient of f of x is x and the dynamical system that we were working with was x dot is negative x now as you approach closer to the optimal solution the value of the value of x also becomes smaller so that means you are making smaller and smaller uh, updates towards the optimal solution and that basically slows down your convergence speed on the other hand this particular dynamical system or this particular dynamical system this always has a always has a gradient of plus 1 or minus 1 uh, no matter where you are right so this is this becomes particularly useful when you are within the minus 1 to 1 range if you are within minus 1 to 1 range you still have a large gradient value as compared to this particular dynamical system right and therefore you can make uh, fast you basically can make faster updates towards your optimal solution this 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 particular dynamical system is useful if, if let's say x is more than 1 then uh, I mean then you wouldn't want to, to restrict your particular uh, update to just plus 1 or minus 1 right but in but then if you are if you if you basically in the regime from minus 1 to 1 you can make better updates or you can make faster updates by choosing this particular dynamical system right so that gives you an idea how to design dynamical system which first of all have the same equilibrium point this one this also has the same equilibrium point right gradient of f of x x is 0 when x is equal to x star right so this has the same equilibrium point but by just simply redesigning the vector field or the right hand side of the vector field you can come up with algorithms which are maybe uh, faster even in discretized uh, version so if i if i were to discretize this algorithm i would write this as xk plus 1 is xk minus step size times something like this right and if you uh, if you recall algorithms like adam or adagrad you would see that there is some kind of gradient normalization in those uh, commonly used algorithms right the ones that are most popularly used for training deep neural networks you would see that uh, they use some form of gradient normalization and this is one of the this is the reason why we use gradient normalization because uh, we can actually closer to the optimal solution we can make better or faster updates then is this clear? All right. So, what is the difference between uh, optimizing functions? Let's say I have a function of the form f1x like this, one fourth. Okay. I. So, both these functions have the same uh, optimal solutions x equal to 0 right so which one do you think is more uh, sort of suitable function to work suitable in the sense which I mean for which particular function you can arrive at the optimal solution faster why uh, first one right 1 to 1 right right so so let's say this is your half x square right and if i look at uh, maybe one fourth x to the power four it possibly looks something like this something like this right so this range is minus one to one so outside this range you have better gradients with this particular function but the moment you you are in this range of minus 1 to 1 the gradient values are uh, basically in this case uh, x cube right whereas this one has gradient of the form x now for x between negative 1 and 1 this is much much greater than x cube 
and you would be making faster sort of updates towards the optimal solution than working with functions of the form 1 4th x to the 4 and this is why one like, this is precisely why we tend to work with functions which are mean square laws or something we mean square right and not quartic kind of function of because we can optimize those functions much faster than something like this so this is these class of functions are called strongly convex function does everyone know what con convex function is so we'll also again i mean as i said like we'll, we'll start with optimization first so we will be reviewing the basics of optimization followed by uh, basics of uh, stability theory and that's when like once we have covered those is when we are going to move to study distributed optimization but this class of function is called strongly convex uh, function and because of the strong convexity nature you continue to have uh, like a gradient value which does not diminish as fast as maybe something like one fourth x uh, quartic function of this form and therefore it's uh, it's better to work with these class of functions where you can provide accelerated convergence guarantees then with working with functions like these where it's difficult to provide accelerated convergence guarantees the question is can all functions be accelerated or optimization of all the functions be accelerated so strongly convex is one class of function that we looked at which looks like uh, i mean you can provide design accelerated optimization algorithm we just looked at the normalization form of it as well but if i look at functions of this form uh, something like mod x or a smooth version of it where i mean you don't you have a well defined gradient so you can make it arbitrarily smooth over here so this f of x is mod x so what is the gradient of or the magnitude of the gradient at any point plus 1 right magnitude of the gradient is 1 right so just by knowing the gradient value at any point you cannot ascertain how far you are from the optimal solution whereas with x square if you know the gradient value you can i mean at least if you know the optimal solution and the gradient value you know that how far you are from the optimal solution so just by knowing the gradient value here if you use any gradient based optimization there is no way for you to know how far you are from the optimal solution and therefore these class of functions which do not have a sort of a, this form of gradient a strongly convex form of gradient uh, these class of functions cannot be accelerated in general using simple gradient based optimization so there is a specific class of functions the strongly convex function happens to be one of those the other functions which i mean again we'll study later uh, functions which are called uh, functions which satisfy something called pl inequality which are some generalization of strongly convex function so these P, the function that satisfy pl inequality need not be convex for instance if i look at x square plus 3 sin square x so the graph of this would look something like this something like this so this is not a convex function right but then it still has a unique minimum which it which is at x equal to 0 so these class of functions again can be accelerated so we are also going to look at different classes of functions that can like whose optimization can be accelerated and uh, so that is again something that we are going to look at in this course